Before we start this video, I just want to point out that 0% of the people that watch my content are subscribed. Good job, keep it up. Uh oh, there's opinions ahead, so if seeing an opposing viewpoint is going to shift your jimmies into the Russell category, you might want to click off this video. Go ahead, I'll wait. Video games are stupid, your opinions are wrong, and mine are law. Welcome to Salt Shaker, which is basically another side of salt, but I cover multiple games. Have even worse jokes than CeCe's here, I guess. So, so let's get to it. This is less of a game and more of an emulator, I suppose, but whatever, I wanted to talk about this. Modloader64 is a project that allows you to play some of your favorite N64 games online. Sort of. You are essentially still playing the game in single player mode, just sharing an instance with other players. And you can see them! So essentially, in a game like Ocarina of Time, you still play through as per usual. Enemies are client side, so you won't see other players' baddies, and killing them won't drop them for others. But, whenever you pick up an item, every player gets it. Which is fantastic for randomizers, as your friends can just kind of spread out and hit multiple checks simultaneously. Or if you don't have friends, you can play with randos or Twitch subs. Well, I mean, you can still do that even if you have friends. You do it because none of your friends want to play. I don't get it! It's Zelda! Co-op! Online! Why do they want to play it? Do they all have bad taste? Do I have bad taste? Yes. There's a ton of custom models to choose from, voice packs, and just general mods that have a variety of effects. My favorite is one that allows you to sprint and climb anything like in Breath of the Wild. It definitely breaks the game a few times. Pairing that with allowing Kid Link to use all items allows for some pretty fun runs. Granted, adding too many mods does make it prone to crashes in my experience. They just recently started doing events too. Ocarina of Time Online had a spooktacular which changed the entire game to a spooky alternative texture pack. And it added Dark Link invasions on top of a new emote and costume system. There's actually another event going on for the holidays right now. Their Discord's pretty active with people seeking games, model commissions, and mod showcases, and there are more games on the way, but currently, you can play Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, and Mischief Makers Online. Yep. You can play a game with multiple marinas. That's... That's nice. It's a Breath of the Wild ripoff. Not... entirely. It's Breath of the Wild with waifus. Hey! That already has waifus. But yeah, it's basically Breath of the Wild with more of a combat and RPG focus. So, Genshin Impact is a Breath of the Wild inspired game. Yes, clearly there is a lot lifted from that major Nintendo title. And I don't know if it's just a bias in me because I'm a ripoff of other YouTubers, but I honestly didn't really get that many Breath of the Wild vibes after actually getting into the game. Yes, you got the cell shading, climbing, paragliders, which we all know Zelda invented. <coughs> but Genshin really puts a focus on the party and leveling system, as well as the elemental combat. Two elements mixing can cause reactions, and if you really want to bring the pain in the fights, you need to be using and abusing these mixes. Despite what you think, it's not an MMO. It's a free-to-play single-player game with some co-op and, of course, gotcha elements. Not really a big fan of gotchas, but I've gotten plenty of goodies without spending money, so it's not a huge issue for me. One of the things that kept me playing this game is just the charm of it. There's a lot of little details that a lot of people can miss. Like when you get the quest to help the boy feed the birds, try killing them. See what happens. I love hidden details and events that you find just from playing without having the game outright tell you. This game isn't exactly complete, though. There is a lot to do, but much like Breath of the Wild, it severely lacks in enemy variety. There's a lot of cool bosses for you to fight, and they are adding new content almost every month. However, since this is a cross-platform game, and one of those platforms is mobile, you have time constraints in the form of resin. The longer I play this game, the less I like it. Late game grind gets ridiculous, and the time walls just make it so if you're not playing every single day, you will fall behind. And I can't play every single day. Still, for free, I'd say it's pretty great, and I'm not even a big anime or gacha fan. You can 100% play and beat this game with the free things it gives you. But seriously, the co-op sucks. You get like 90% of the game locked away in only 15 minutes of content because of resin. So, I absolutely love the first Hyrule Warriors, and I was pretty excited for this even before playing the demo, and I gotta say, this is hands down my favorite Musou. The combat in this game is really just so much fun. So if you didn't know, this is Dynasty Warriors Zelda Edition, but they kinda got rid of the tactical aspect, because capturing outposts doesn't really matter unless the game tells you to directly. Taking the aspects of Breath of the Wild like Flurry Rush's runes and rods just makes fighting in this game such a blast. Would honestly be okay if Breath of the Wild 2 combat was similar to this, just obviously a little more toned down, because I don't really think Link should be doing this in a traditional Zelda game. There is a decent amount of content, I think it has more than base Hyrule Warriors, but obviously not as much as the Definitive Edition. I was surprised by the amount of characters, and a lot of them feel viable despite there being some very, very obvious god tiers like Uncle Link and Impa and Impa and Impa and Impa, I have a problem. This game does have a lot of frame drops, though it didn't really ruin my playthrough. The lock on camera is also kinda garbage, but just be wary of that, I guess. A while back I talked about how I wish Champions Battle would let you hang out with the pilots, and that's sort of been answered. The cutscenes are such a blast. It's so good to see Wild Link with a personality, and there's a lot of really cool moments. Wow, spoiler time, swap to this point to skip them. Okay, here we go. 
Screw this dumb deuce ex machina. This little turd shows up to make sure that the five major characters that canonically died get sunshine and smiley endings. And you know, don't. But hey, it's whatever. You could have just had a really cool and really dark end for a Zelda game, which honestly would have been refreshing and leading to Breath of the Wild 2 a little better. But nah, I honestly don't have hope in Breath of the Wild 2 being as dark as I originally thought now. Granted, I still love the cutscenes. Just, just not the whole making another split in the Zelda timeline. But my heart hurt seeing Sidon choke up when Mifa said she was proud of him. That dude had it the toughest to jump back and then return to his timeline. All right, CC, sum it up. Mod Loader 64 Pros. Play your favorite classics in a new way. Lots of customization. Easy to set up. Fun community. Neat events. Cons. Can crash when modding ironically. Instances not being shared isn't everyone's cup of tea. PvP still hasn't been re-added to Oot. Genshin Pros. Great gameplay. Beautiful graphics. Fun to just explore slash collect. Buried bosses. Still beatable without spending money. Good for a time sink. Cons. Co-op is severely lacking, resin is dumb, not much enemy variety, late game is a chore. Age of Calamity Pros, super fun combat, nice grind, decent replayability and post game, lots of nice characters with good movesets, fun cutscenes, cons, bad FPS slash camera and of course, egg. Okay, but why don't my friends want to do co-op randomizers with me? 